and I'm going to demonstrate how to use Logger Pro to track a moving object. So first thing we'll do is we'll insert a movie and you do need to have QuickTime Player loaded on your machine. Uh, Logger Pro is designed to work with QuickTime Player. If you don't have QuickTime Player lo loaded, you'll get a grayed out movie dialog box and you won't be able to select a movie. So we have a spring mass system here and I'm going to go over to the beginning of one of these segments. All right, just where I'm about to launch. All right, so I'm about to launch this this time. You'll notice I have a ruler in the background, and it's actually this ruler is not in the background. It's actually just alongside of this, so it's in the same plane of reference, which is important. Because what we need to do is we need to get our height scale prop properly set up here, so we can track this object. And you'll notice there's a couple of uh, buttons down at the bottom, and these buttons, what they do is this one gives us a set of tools that we're going to use to track this object. I'm on the side here, we see this set of icons come up and I'll show you how to use those. And this button on the left, I'm just going to set this up on the side, that just tells us, that just allows us to set our time equal zero on the on our starting point properly and we can also sync our movie time to that if we'd like as well. And uh, so what I'm going to do first is we need to put down some XY axes on here and that's this icon right here. I'm going to set the origin. And the origin I'm going to set, and I, and I may move it in, in a bit in a second once I see exactly where I, I launched this from. Here's the Y axis. Here's the X axis. Um, I can actually rotate my axis if I had something on a ramp. I don't have a ramp here, so I'll keep that level. I can move this around to wherever I would want to make the origin. I'm going to put it right where you see the brass intersect with the aluminum here because that'll be a, hopefully a fairly easy point to track in this video. I also need to set a ruler here so I can get distance measurements timed accurately. I'll start at the 60 centimeter mark and drag this down to maybe the 40 centimeter mark. So that distance is 40 centimeters so it's 0 0.40 meters. I can actually start tracking this object. There are some other features here that we don't really need. The key one I'm going to use now is, is this one. This is called adding points. And what I do is, is I'm going to turn this on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to track this center point on this pendulum here. And every time I click my mouse, I'm going to click it right now, you see it just added a blue point. The other thing, if you're watching here, if you look up top here at this time, every time I click another point, our time advances by a little bit. Because what it's actually doing that right now it's actually moving frame by frame the video forward. And if you watch my head over here, you can see my head moving back slowly. And I'm just sitting here waiting for this thing to start moving. And if you watch my fingers, at some point I'm going to release. I'm moving, 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 moving forward. In time here, one of these days I'll actually let it go. Here we go. So I'm I'm getting it ready to let it go right now. And I'm going to adjust my x y axis down a little bit so it can be as accurate as possible. I'm going to start at the the bottom here. So this will be the negative maximum negative amplitude. So I'm going to start plotting some more points now. All right, right there is my time zero. So I'm going to take my graph time now, set that to my time zero. Okay. And so now I have actually established a time zero, and my origin here is down at zero. And now I can start tracking this, this line here that separates the brass from the aluminum. And I'm just going to track that as it moves up and down. And you can see it gets a little bit blurry here. when you're moving the fastest and when you slow down it becomes much clearer again. And I am moving down now. And the question is, you can see it's sort of bl very blurred here. You can see is it this point here is at that point there. So you can sort of make a judgment call. And if we have a better camera, we have another set of videos done on a, an Apple iPhone product. And 
you might get clearer pictures. And the one you'll do for your lab experiment is done with those, with those videos. And I'm just going to track this for five complete cycles. So this is my second time up. And actually that one went down a little bit, didn't go up quite as high as the first. And really the smarter point to track, it looks like this black slot is easier for me to see the contrast on. So that would have been the smarter point to, to track. Really good to have a really high contrast. difference to track and we did that with the next the videos that you'll use so it'll be a lot easier to track so I'm just going to track this and I won't track I'll just track it to the bottom of this this is I think three complete cycles I'd like you to track five complete cycles and then we do alright so there's our five cycles um, I, I did three so now I can uh, flip over to my graph and you can see here's here's my graph of my data um, and you'll see I we start this um, at we actually set our, our axes to actually be at the bottom of our run um, at the bottom of our amplitude and the top from here to here is our peak to peak uh, height that it traverses and now what I can do with this data I can adjust my axes I, I probably want to scale this out a little bit so I can drag this over here alright so we have a nice picture there and you notice we don't really care about the x position. We only really care about the up and down motion of this. The x position is irrelevant for this little experiment. Now let's see if I can stretch this axis off just so it looks a little bit better. Well, actually, I'm going to leave this axis here. So what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and do a curve fit on this. Um, you can see this looks like a, a nice sinusoidal function. So I'm going to highlight all this blue data. And now I'm going to go over here up top here. I have a curve fit tool. And I'm going to only, I don't need the x values to curve fit. I'm going to curve fit the y values, the up and down values, for things that are interesting here. Hit OK. And now the question is, what type of curve would you like to go to? And it, it starts out with a simple proportional curve, linear, quadratic, and so on and so forth. If you scroll down, we're looking for a sine curve. This just looks like a sinusoidal function. And we can actually go ahead and try a fit. And there's all of our numbers to fit this. And you can see it looks like it's mapping that fairly closely. And it also traces out future values as well. Um, and one of the key numbers here to see how well this fits is your root mean square error. And this shows us that the, the average error, vertical error that we have on this is 0 0.004 meters. And so we have about a, a 0.4 um, centimeter error on average in this data, so which is a four millimeter error on our average height difference over a 30 centimeter distance, which isn't too bad. And if you hit okay with that fit, um, I can also do a calculated <coughs> column. All right. And so over here, I put it, here's our calculated column. It shows you your, your model that you just came up with this using your fit and you can see now it, it, it shows me my graph backwards in time and forwards in time. I'm going to shift this back over so I can just see. Alright, so we can see our, our graph here cycling up and down and it is actually showing our what this looks like. And you can see it, it fits fairly well. It looks like it's going through all of our points. And now we have right here our equation for our our curve that we can use to do some analysis with. And that's your goal for this project is to find these numbers and we'll discuss those together in class to see what they mean.